Hey everyone, Tech Steve here, back with another comparison videos. So whenever you're looking for a television set, we all look for value and we look at what they call specs. But I'm here to tell you that specs doesn't mean anything until you compare something in real time. So in today's video, I'm gonna compare the 2021 Samsung Q60A versus the 2021 LG NanoCell 75. Now here's the thing, the Q series come in at 599, for a entry level 43 inch TV set where the Nano comes in at 449. So that's a difference of almost $150. Now, when I looked at the spec sheet, they're almost 100% compatible. So in this video, we're gonna find out, is it worth $150 more to spend on the Samsung television set? Now, before I get started, I wanna tell you something about myself. So when I film my videos, I just tell the truth. In fact, in my bedroom, I use the Samsung QN85A. I really enjoyed this television set and I made a full video on it. Now I'm still waiting on my stand, but in my living room, I use a UM7300 LG from 2019. So if you guys ready, sit back and relax, and let's get started. All right, first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and reset the Samsung picture profile. And no matter what I do, someone's gonna say it wasn't right, but uh, we're gonna do this best we can. So under picture profiles, I'm gonna go to the expert settings and I'm gonna go down here and reset it back to factory. Now, one thing I'm gonna do here as well is I'm gonna go back up to the top and I'm going to increase the brightness to 50, which will put the TV brightness at 100% so we can see how these perform. Another thing I'm gonna do is go down here to general and go down here to power and energy savings mode. And we're gonna turn off the brightness optimization. We're gonna turn off the motion lighting, screen saver. So everything we do is gonna be at 100% brightness so you guys can compare the different levels. And now on the LG, you can see it's on standard mode. I'm gonna hit the advanced settings and go down here to reset and hit yes. And then if we go up here and check the brightness, you can see it's 100%, contrast 95, these are all the factory settings. And I'm gonna adjust this down to the BT1886 to match the Samsung. And you see motion eye care, everything's turned off. And also went in here and changed off gaming optimization, so it's gonna be on standard adjustments. I just looked through all these different settings and see if I could just turn off anything that's not needed. So we can do a, um, comparison the right way. But again, everything will not be perfect. I think for the most part, everything looks to be good. And I don't see an equal mode on here, looking through these menus on the LG, which I know last year model definitely had one for sure. So not sure, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. And here's a contrast test for you guys. Now, if you look at it, you can see the Samsung has a lot more range right here than the LG. And it has a little bit warmer picture to me where the LG is a lot more brighter but let's do a few more tests here. And on this test, it seems like the LG has more natural colors to me. The whiter is a white, and that gray level is a lot more detailed over the Samsung. Now in this illustration, for me, the Samsung has more range. So you can see the black level right here, and then it goes to gray, where the LG over here doesn't have as much range, but what I can tell on the LG is that the black looks more truer, where the Samsung looks a little bit more of a washed out black in comparison. And this is a viewing angle test. So here we have the LG Nano 75. Let's go right here in front of it. Let's get a little bit closer over here. And let's go over to the other side where the Samsung Q60A is. Now, one thing I can tell again is that the Samsung has this glow at the bottom of it. So let's go over to the LG. See, that's completely black. This has a glow to it. So what that tells me is that the Samsung is going to have a little bit more blooming whenever you watch in different scenes that has a lot of transitions with the white levels. But once you guys tell me what you think in the comments below. And here's another view using the Blackmagic camera instead of the handheld camera. In my opinion so far, I think definitely the Samsung has better colors. However, if you look at that $150 price difference, I think the LG is doing a really good job with those black levels, especially being that it's an IPS panel over the VA. 
you can see that those viewing angles where the Samsung had a, like a little bit of glow to it, where the LG was pretty much solid black. I mean, it looked like the TV set was turned off. Now I will tell you with those color profiles of the Samsung, they really support a format for people who are graphic artists who requires a lot of true colors. It's called DCI P3. Now on this test, I'm gonna do real quick. I'm gonna show you guys the color ranges of both television sets. And this is really gonna show you that the Samsung has better colors, but it's $150 more. This is where the DCI PC color grid really kicks in. So if you look at the Samsung, you can see on the top layer, you have so much more range of gray level. Now let's change the color so I can show you guys the different ranges of that. And this is what it looks like on red level. So you can see both of them looks almost the same until you get to the very top layer. The LG doesn't even show the color range where the Samsung does. And here's the green picture profile, the same thing. And here we are at the blue, where again, the Samsung's gonna show more color range on that top layer. So if you need really true colors, you definitely wanna go with the Samsung. So after watching those demos, you can see that the contrast ratio is really showing off on the LG. In fact, look at this demo right here. You can see that the LG back here is still doing a great job. But now let's talk about the designs of the TV set so you guys can see some of the differences and some of the similarities. Both TV sets have a really nice clean frame, but I will tell you that the Samsung is much thinner due to the edge lit display over the direct lit. And here's that side view of the Samsung I was referring to. Like I always say, it's like about a half inch thick compared to the little bit thicker LG, which is not a big problem overall. I do like the foot pattern better on the LG than the Samsung. However, the Samsung will let you choose from two different heights, so you can put different consoles below the television set. Now, an interesting thing, both TV sets have two HDMI, one with eARC for 7.1 audio. Both TV sets have two USB. Both TV sets have a fiber optic output and a LAN connection, and both TV sets have a coaxial input for hooking it up to over-the-air antennas. And here's the remote control that comes with the Samsung and the LG Nano Cell. Now here we have the Samsung remote control, but the biggest selling point is on the back of it, it has a solar panel, so you don't have to put batteries in it all the time. And when it comes to the LG remote control, you can see it's fully featured with a number pad, Google, and Assistant's voice buttons here at the bottom. Now taking a look at the Samsung remote control, it has a USB-C on the bottom of it, and the LG is a little bit thicker, and it runs off of AA batteries. Now if you use voice commands, you don't really have to use these buttons so much. You just press the microphone and start using it. But again, both of them are very functional, but some people prefer to have the fully loaded LG remote control overall. Now you can use both of these TV sets as a PC monitor and they will support up to 4K at 60 Hertz. Now the Samsung does have a PC mode built into the software, so you can get a little bit better response on that. But let's take this little laptop right here 
hook them up as a computer monitor and seeing what they look like side by side. Now we're going to take a look at a couple of examples of using these TV sets as a computer monitor. So in the center, I have my Apple computer and let's go ahead and pull up a few documents. So here's an example of Excel sheet. And just by looking through the camera, I will tell you that the Samsung is a lot brighter, but overall the LG has some pretty good colors, but keep in mind that Samsung is $150 more. And here's another example of a document using Microsoft Office. Again, both TV sets look good if you're here looking at them. So I think you'd be fine with either TV, but again, the Samsung is a lot more brighter because it has dual LEDs. But now let's go ahead and check the different picture profiles using this Lion screensaver. So the first TV set we're gonna look at is the Samsung. So if we go over here and then I'm gonna go ahead and get to the picture modes. So here we are in standard. And one thing that really stands out to me that I really don't like about the software is that it's always on top of everything that I'm doing. So if I press up and hit picture setup, then I can change the adjustments. But again, you got standard, here's natural, movie mode, filmmakers mode, dynamic, and back to standard. But I wish it was a way to get rid of this. See, I can't get rid of that. So let's go and put it back on standard. Now I'm gonna take a look at the LG picture modes. So here at the top, I can hit standard. There's uh, there's automatic power saving mode. There's cinema mode, sports mode, filmmaker mode, expert brightness, expert darkness, vivid, and back to standard. And the great thing is you can still see the majority of the picture whenever you're doing this. So those are some examples of using it as a computer monitor as well as seeing the different profiles. And if you guys know a way to get rid of the menu system while you're going through those picture profiles, leave me a comment below because I played around with it and I'm not figuring this out. Now I will tell you, we're gonna do a quick little gaming demo. And I will say that the Samsung has a lower latency when it's not in gaming mode, but when you put both of them in gaming mode, they're very similar. So I'll just go through the settings and kind of adjust these for gaming. Now, if you want to see more of these television sets, I have a playlist that has more videos in it. So you can go see a more one-on-one -on -one with each television set, but uh, let's play some games. So I want to leave you guys with this final thoughts. It's not about watching videos and figure out who has the biggest, the baddest television set. It's about finding which one has the best value for you. Now, after doing all these tests, you can see the LG for a little bit less money performs at a high level. And I think the average user would be very, very satisfied with it. Now, if you want to get into graphic arts and doing a lot more things, with a picture and a display and computers, then you definitely want to spend that extra money to get the Q series. Now doing demos, you see the pictures are very similar, but I'd like to see what you guys think in the comments below. Now, if you like this kind of content, make sure you go and give me a thumbs up. I'm Tech Steve, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.